All right, so today we're going to be looking at lesson 9-4, dealing with rotations. We're again going to be looking at the marching band. Today they're going to be in a triangle formation. And then the triangle is going to appear to rotate clockwise around a point. And they say like a pinwheel. The center of the rotation is going to be located at 0, 0 on our coordinate plane. So if you look at your very first figure, it shows you the triangle, and then it gets rotated to the second figure. So if you're having trouble with thinking about clockwise, think about a clock. Your hands go in this direction. That's clockwise. If it goes in this direction, that is against the direction of the clock, and so that would be considered counterclockwise. So we are going to look here, and they tell you this type of spinning transformation is a rotation. You may think of it as a turn, but a rotation is going to map points across a circular arc. The distance from your point to the center of your rotation is going to stay the same. So if a point is five units away, it's going to end five units away from your center of rotation. So whenever you have a rotation, you have to have your center of rotation and the angle of rotation. And so it'll tell you which direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, and the angle of rotation. Your center of rotation is going to be the point that does not change. So wherever your center of rotation is, it's going to stay in the same position after you rotate. They give us a couple of functions that are somewhat common. This notation is a clockwise rotation, 90 degrees. If you are going to rotate 180 degrees, you use this notation. And then they give you this notation, which is a clockwise rotation of 270 or counterclockwise 90 degrees. So, those are some ones that you're going to be using a lot. I personally like to make my little formula sheet for these so that I have a 90 degree clockwise rotation and I write them out. XY is going to go to Y negative X. Then, your 180 degree rotation, why don't we need to specify that it's clockwise? Any ideas there? 180 degrees, if you turn clockwise or counterclockwise, you're going to end up in the same spot. So 180 degrees doesn't have to say specifically. But you end up at negative x, negative y, and then 270 degrees clockwise, you end up at negative y, x. So I want to show you on a graph kind of where those come from. So I have a little graph here. And we are going to pick a random point for our rotation here. So I'm going to pick the point 4, 8. You want to pick something that doesn't have the same X and Y value so that you can see it more clearly. So if we rotate 90 degrees, when you're doing rotations, we're going to go about the origin here. And we're going to put our pencil on the origin to keep it still. And then we're going to turn our paper. And so the point ends up, if you think of this as now your Y axis and your X axis, your axes switched places. And so now we go 8 and down 4. So that's why on your formula, xy goes to your x and y switch, and then you're going down. So it becomes a negative x value. 
for 180 degree rotation, it ends up like this. And so you end up going left four and down eight. And so it's this, the X axis is still your X axis and your Y axis is still your Y axis. Those didn't change, but your X and Y values got negated because now you're going the other direction. And then if you're going 270, that would be going this way. And so we go left eight and up four. And so our eight value is our Y, it got negated. And again, our X axis is now going vertical and our Y axis is horizontal. So our X and Y got switched. And so that's where that formula comes from. Okay, so that kind of, if you're interested in where those formulas came from, that's where they came from. So we want to complete the table for the two rotations that they give us. So we're going to have the point here where our x gets negated. So our x is currently negative 3. And so negative, negative 3 becomes a positive 3. And our y value just gets moved to the front. So 10, negative 3. I mean 10, negative 3. Then the point 0, 0 is just 0, 0. Then the point here, our x and y are going to get negated. So we're going to have negative 3, negative 10. For this one, we're going to have 3, negative 10. And then for the last one, we're going to have 0 and 0. So now let's look at the next page. They give us this figure here. And they want you to predict the direction of the arrow after the rotations. And they tell you the center of each rotation is the origin, 0, 0. So again, notice on this graph, it is going by twos. We are going to rotate 90 degrees clockwise, 180 degrees, and 90 degrees counterclockwise. Each time, you're going to start with the figure that they gave you. You're going to go back to the original figure. So we are going to use our patty paper for this. So you see if you can predict where those are going to end up and then determine if your predictions were right. So first thing you're going to want to do is sketch your figure, your arrow. And you're also going to want to sketch your X and Y axes. So that you can make sure they're lined up properly. So now, the center of our rotation is 0, 0. That's the origin. You're going to put your pencil on the origin, and you're going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Now, our lesson yesterday dealing with reflections, we used our fingernail and rubbed to make our lead transfer. But we don't have any lead on this side of our patty paper. So in order to use the same method, what you're going to want to do is flip your patty paper over and trace your arrow. And you're going to want to go over it a few times so that you have some lead on your arrow. Some people want to know why I can't just flip my patty paper over and use the other side. With figures that are symmetric, it might will work, but they're not always going to be symmetric figures. Like if I have a triangle that looks something like that, and I flip it over to use it, that's no longer the same figure. 
I'll draw it on our patty paper so you can see. But if I flip that over, now it's not the same figure. So you want to make sure that you practice something that's going to work for all of your figures. So now you've got patty paper that has lead on both sides. You're going to put your pencil at the origin and then you're going to rotate it 90 degrees. We have to turn it until our axes line up again. And then you're going to take your finger nail and you're going to rub a little bit to transfer the lead. And so there is your figure. Okay. So that's going to be pointing to the right. Then we put it back at where we started and we again are going to rotate it. This time we're going to rotate it 180 degrees. And it ends up pointing down. And if you transfer your lead, you end up with a figure that's pointing down. And then we can do the same idea. And this time it says 90 degrees counterclockwise. So that is this direction. And so transfer your lead and you end up with that arrow. And so then you can take your pencil and you can go over them to make them more pronounced. Because sometimes if you don't have enough lead, they won't necessarily transfer 100% correctly. So that's number two and three. So hopefully your predictions were correct. Now we're going to look at number four. We are taking figure A and we are mapping it onto figure B. We are going to rotate A so that it is onto B. So on these, what you want to do is trace your figure. You do not have to, although you can, you do not have to trace it on both sides because the figure is already there. We just need to figure out when they line up. And you don't need to worry about your axes, although you can. All we need is the figure. So we know that it goes this way. Okay? So we know that it's going to be a 90 degree clockwise rotation, or you could say 270 degrees counterclockwise rotation. What we need to figure out is the center of rotation. And so the book says if you identify the center, then it's easier to look at it. And some of you may think that it's easier to figure that out first. Some of the advantages of identifying the center first would be that you don't have to sit there and go, uh, which way does it go? And then look at the center. It doesn't matter. You've got to have both of them. So if you look at this figure and you look at B, do you notice any points that are staying in the same position? So you may say somewhere here. So I'm purposely going to pick one that's not correct. So I'm going to try one, one. So put your pencil tip at one, one and hold it there while you turn your figure. Did that produce figure B? No. So let's try again. If I pick somewhere over here, obviously that doesn't produce figure B. So hopefully you can do trial and error and figure out exactly where it goes. And you should end up with that it is at one zero. And that traces it so that it ends up on figure B. Okay. So some of y'all are able to look at that and know it's okay if you can't. So for four, the center of rotation would be the point one zero. Now let's look at B. So again, we're going to trace our figure. And we want to determine where the center of rotation is. I can tell that it's going to be going this direction which is 90 degrees counterclockwise, or you could call that 270 degrees clockwise. Either one would work. They're the same position when you move them. So I could pick somewhere in the first quadrant. And you can see that figure doesn't get mapped anywhere near 
What if I pick somewhere in here? No. Over here? No. So just picking random points kind of helps you see where you might have to put your center of rotation. So hopefully you're seeing that it has to go somewhere in the fourth quadrant. So let me try. No, not there. So just keep trying random points until you figure it out. And some of you are going to be able to figure it out more quickly than others. And that's just how you think. And that's okay. But eventually, you'll figure out, whoop, there it is. It is at 1, negative 2. So that would be your center of rotation. So now we're going to look. They tell us about the angle of rotation in our figure. Every point maps to another point from the pre-image to the image, and those are used in the primes. So they give us a rectangle, ABCO, which is this one here. And then it's rotated 90 degrees clockwise, and it maps to A prime, B prime, C prime, and O. From the diagram, we are able to draw some angles to verify what they are telling us in that paragraph. If you take point B and point B prime, and you make an angle where the vertex is at the center of the rotation, that angle is always going to match up with the angle that you rotated your figure. So in this one, our rotation was 90 degrees, and this should be a 90 degree angle. If you look at C to C prime, and you make an angle that has a vertex at your center of your rotation, it is also a 90 degree angle. And that's the case for every single figure, every single point in your figure. That angle should match the angle of rotation. So now let's look at the bottom of this page. They give us a square that is centered around the origin O. And point A is the top left vertex of the square. And they want us to rotate it. So we are going to take our patty paper, and the first thing we're going to do is trace our square and trace our X and Y axes. And you're going to want to label A because we'll need it in a little bit. So we are going to rotate it 45 degrees clockwise. And it's about the origin. So start off by putting your pencil at the origin. And we're going to start rotating it 45 degrees clockwise. Some of you may be unsure how to know where 45 degrees is. And y'all may think it's about right there. If you look. This angle is not a 45 degree angle. And it should be A to A prime with the vertex of that angle at the center of your rotation should be a 45 degree angle. We want to keep turning until it ends up looking like this. And so that is the square that you should end up having where A prime is now up here. And so label the point A prime on your graph, and it should go right there. And it asks you, what is the measure of angle A, O, A prime? It should be a 45 degree angle. Also, if you look, this x axis. And this y-axis, make a 90 degree angle here. And A is halfway in between there. So that's how I know that I need to move it up to here for it to be a 45 degree angle. Okay? 
So looking back at your book on the next page, we are skipping this. We don't have the software and the tools to be able to do this in class. So we're going to skip over this page. And then we're going to go and look at rotations off of the coordinate plane. So just like your translations and your reflections, you can do a rotation without the coordinate plane. Your rotation is going to map a point P to P prime or Q to Q prime, and it's going to have some of these properties. It says O is the center of rotation. So this first one says PO is going to be the same length as P prime O, and all that means is that the distance from any point to the center of rotation is going to be the same before and after the rotation. And then this is what we were just saying. With the angle, it's going to match for every point on your figure. It's going to match, and it's going to be whatever you rotated it. Now looking at this notation. So they give you this notation here. It's a capital R for our rotation. Reflections where the lowercase r. Don't worry, you're not going to have that notation on your test. That's just the book's notation. But it's a rotation. I mean, a, a rotation, and it's about the center O, whatever that letter is, that's the center of your um, rotation. And then this angle here is the degree that you're going to move it, and it's going to be as a counterclockwise angle. So I'm going to write here for you what these say. So this first one says to rotate about point O 90 degrees clockwise. And then this one is about point C, 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then this one is point A, is the center, and it is 90 degrees counterclockwise. So don't worry too much about the notation. That's what they are wanting you to do. So we are going to do that in our book. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get your patty paper and trace your triangle. And then you're going to want to take your patty paper and flip it over and go back over your lines. So that you have some lead to transfer onto your page. And then you're going to want to label your points just so that you keep up with where they are because they want us to label our points. So we're going to rotate about point O. So put your pencil on O, and it says clockwise 90 degrees. So that should be about there. Some of you may struggle with exactly where it needs to go. You can use your protractor and measure that the angle A, O, A prime is 90 degrees. But I'm not going to get out a protractor and measure. As long as it looks pretty close, you're good. So then take your finger and make your lead transfer. And so there's your figure right there. 
And so this is now A prime, C prime, and B prime. Then we're going to do rotation two. We go back to the original figure, and it is about point C. So you're going to put your pencil on C, and it says counterclockwise 90 degrees. So that's this direction, which is about right there. And so there's your figure. So C prime, it's now going to be C double prime, because this is the second one. And then A prime is over here on the left. So A double prime. And then this one is going to be B double prime. Then we are going to do the third one. So you're going to put your pencil on A, and you're going to rotate it counterclockwise, which is this direction. And so there's your figure. And so A triple prime, C triple prime, and B triple prime. Now we're going to look at three rotations that map a square onto itself. So what we're looking for is taking a square, and so I have a square here. From earlier. And I want to rotate it so that it ends up back onto itself. So I can rotate it if I keep the center at the origin. I can rotate it 90 degrees and a square is mapped onto itself. Or I could rotate it 90 degrees the other direction, counterclockwise. I could rotate it 180 degrees or I could rotate it 270 degrees in either direction. All of those would rotate it back onto itself. It wouldn't be the identical square. If you were wanting to make the square identical, you would have to rotate. So if I rotate it at 90, another 90, I would need to rotate it 180 degrees to make it so that it got back to where A was the top left. So that's what they're talking about there. Looking at the next page, some figures such as a square, are going to have rotational symmetry, which means that a rotation that is less than 360 degrees can map the shape onto itself. The smallest angle is called the angle of rotational symmetry. It has to be less than 360 degrees. So let's look at this isosceles triangle. If we take our figure, we can use patty paper and trace our figures to determine if they have any rotational symmetry. So we can trace our figure. And what we want to determine if I rotate this, does it ever map onto itself? It did when it got back to 360 degrees, but it specifically said it had to be less than 360 degrees. So this has no rotational symmetry, none whatsoever. If it was equal to 360, then all of the shapes would map onto themselves. So that's why it has to be less than 360, because at 360 degrees, every shape will be back onto itself. For the lines of symmetry, the reflectional symmetry, you're looking for, are there any, figure, any lines that will cut the figure in half? And for the isosceles triangle, yes, 
if you draw a line right here down the middle, that would be the one line of symmetry. Looking at the equilateral triangle. If you rotate it, so sometimes it'll be helpful to mark, that's the top, so that you know exactly when you get back to there. That's one, where it ends up exactly like it was. Two, and three. So on this one, for the equilateral triangle, it had three times that it mapped back onto itself. So in the 360 degrees, three times did it map onto itself. And if you divide, that gives you an angle of 120 degrees for your rotational symmetry. Then for an equilateral triangle, we know we have a line of symmetry here. And we also have a line of reflectional symmetry there and here. So it has three lines of reflectional symmetry, three lines of symmetry. Let's look at the rhombus. I'm just going to write top on it. So we want to turn it, not yet, not yet, okay, there is one where it's identical to what it started as, it maps onto itself, and there's the second one that puts it back to where we started. So for a rhombus, it mapped onto itself two times, 360 degrees divided by two is 180 degrees. So it has a rotational symmetry of 180 degrees. Then for a rhombus, it has lines of symmetry in the diagonal. And so those are the two lines of symmetry. Now, some of you may think that there might be one, maybe not this direction, but kind of going top to bottom like this. And so if you try that, if you try and fold it, do you see how it ends up not mapping onto itself? So that's how you can check, verify it does not have any other lines of symmetry. Okay, the last one we're going to look at is the regular hexagon. So I'm going to put a dot up here at the top. And so there is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Back to the top. So there were six times that it mapped onto itself. So for our angle on this one, 360 divided by 6 is going to be a 60 degree rotation. So that's the rotational symmetry that it would have. For the lines of symmetry, it has one down the middle here. And it also has one down these vertices. It also has a horizontal one, which is going through the middle of the sides and this way and that way. So it ends up having six lines of symmetry. So some of you may be saying, I notice a pattern and you might. There is a correlation. I won't say 100% of the time, but a lot of the time. The relationship between the lines of symmetry and the degrees of the rotational symmetry, a lot of times they do end up being the same. So maybe not 100% of the time, but that's a good thing to note. So now we're going to look at the check your understanding. So y'all may want to pause the video and then you can unpause it and check and see if you got them right. So 
when it says name the rotation, which direction did our parallelogram get rotated? It went that way, which is a clockwise rotation. It was a 90 degree rotation clockwise. And the center of the rotation, as you can see, point D did not move. So the center of rotation is point D. So D prime stays where it started. A is going to come to right here. So that's going to be A prime, B prime, and then C prime. And you can always use your patty paper to check and make sure that those work. For this part C, angle A, D, A prime, we know is a right angle because it was a 90 degree rotation. Then they tell us angle A, DC is 30 degrees. And they want us to find the angle A prime DC. Well, it has to be a 60 degree angle based on the information they gave us. Then they want us to identify examples of figures that meet these properties. So 15 A, a square has rotational symmetry with a rotation angle of 90 degrees. For part B, a regular pentagon Three sixty divided by five is where the seventy two degree angle comes into play. For C, you could do a rectangle or you could do a rhombus. We just looked at a rhombus. Either one of those would work. For D, something that has rotational symmetry of 180 degrees and no lines of reflection, you could do a parallelogram. You could also do the letter S. If you rotate your S 180 degrees, it still looks like an S, but it does not have any lines of symmetry. You could do the letter Z. There are several options for some of those. Okay, let's look at number 16. We want to describe the rotation that would move the arrow to these positions. So I'm going to look on my potty paper for these. So first thing you're going to want to do is take and draw your arrow. I'm going to label my origin just in case I need it. We are wanting to point the arrow up and we want the tip to be at 4, 7. So, we need the tip to be somewhere over here, because this is where 4 is, and then 5, 6, about right there. So the way that we are going to turn it is to rotate it about the center 4, 3, and go 90 degrees clockwise. And so if you're not sure how to get that it's exactly 4, 3, the distance from the tip to 4, 3, is one, two, three, four. And so if I start here at three and I go up four, I'll end up at 0.7 for the Y value. For part B, we want it pointing down with the tip at zero, three. So we still want the point of the tip to be at the point zero, three. So the center of this rotation is going to stay at zero, three. And then we are going to have it pointing down. So that's going to be a counterclockwise rotation by 90 degrees. 
For C, we want it pointing up with the tip at three, zero. So three, zero is right here. And so we are going to take our figure and we're rotating it again. Not counterclockwise, but clockwise, because we want it to be pointing up and we want it over here. And so if we take it and turn it this direction, we end up with the tip at three, zero. So the center of that rotation would have to be at the origin. Then they want us to tell where the direction and the position of the tip would be after the rotations they give us. So we start with putting our pencil on the point four, three, and we go 90 degrees counterclockwise. So it's going to be pointing down and our tip would be at four negative one. For part B, 180 degrees about the point two, three. So if I turn it 180 degrees, it's going to end up at the point four, three. And then if I turn it about the point two, zero, and I turn it 90 degrees clockwise, it's going to be pointing up and the tip is going to end up being at five, two. For number 18, a figure that has an angle of rotational symmetry of 10 degrees, that's going to be a figure that maps onto itself every 10 degrees. So, 360 degrees divided by 10 is going to give you 36. And so that figure would have to be a regular polygon that has 36 sides. For number 19, is it possible for a figure to have an angle of rotational symmetry of 37 degrees? Well, if you take 360 and you divide it by 37 degrees, you end up with 9.7 which is not a whole number. So no, we can't end up with a figure that has an angle of rotational symmetry of 37 degrees.